Okay. Um, I'm just going to work the problem from the beginning so you kind of see the whole thought process and working it. We've got f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 10x minus 7. Problem's asking find the equation of the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and then graph with the help of the graphing calculator. I'm going to do it by hand um, just because um, uh, on the final you can't use uh, Desmos. Um, but if you have trouble plugging in Desmos, let me know, and I, I can create a video on that. That's that's no big deal. Okay, so the key part on this is to find a vertex. Now, there's three steps for finding a vertex. Our first step is to identify A and B. A is whatever's in front of our x squared, which is negative 2. B is whatever's in front of our x, which is a positive 10. Step two, plug those into negative b over 2a and simplify. So I'm going to have a negative, and we said b was 10, and then 2 times a, which is negative 2. That gives me negative 10 over 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Now, negative divided by negative is positive, so that's 10 fourths. And that reduces the top and bottom of both divisible by 2. Gives me 5 halves. Step three, by the way, uh, this right here on step two is the X part of my vertex. We'll come back to that. Step three, plug the value that you just found in step two into your function. So we're gonna find F of five halves. Everywhere I have an X, I'll plug in five halves. So I got negative two times five halves squared plus 10 times five halves minus seven. Um, when you square a fraction, you square the top number and you square the bottom number. So our numerator squared, 5 squared is 25. When I square the bottom number, the denominator, 2 squared is 4. Plus 10 times 5 is 50 over 2, minus 7. And um, negative 2 times 25 is negative 50 over 4, plus... 50 over 2 minus 7. <clears throat> now, I'm going to need to eventually get a common denominator. And um, I this right here will combine with that. But um, it's, a high, it's however you want to do it. Um, this, if I divide top and bottom by 2, I'm going to have negative 25 over 2 plus 50 over 2 minus 7. By leaving this with a denominator 2, then um, I can go ahead and combine these together. Or you could do 50 divided by 2 is 25 minus 7, and then combine it. Okay, since these have the same denominator, I can add or subtract numbers up on top. Negative 25 plus 50 is 25 over 2 minus 7, and I could use the mixed number rule here, where you take the number to the side, multiply it times your denominator. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, plus 25, was that 11? 11 halves, I think. Um, but um, I'm going to show it the other way. I get a common denominator. In order to add or subtract fractions, they both need to be fractions, so I rewrite 7 as 7 over 1. Since this has a denominator of 1, um, my common denominator would be 2. So I'm going to rewrite each fraction with 2 as a denominator. Now this one already had 2, so we're fine there. On my second fraction, I multiplied my denominator by 2. So wherever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. Wherever you multiply by the, the denominator, you have to multiply by the numerator. 7 times 2 is 14. Now since they have the same denominator, I can add or subtract top parts. Uh, 25... Uh, minus 14 is 11, so that's 11 halves. And this is the y part of our vertex. So our vertex is, what was the x? 5 halves and 11 halves. Now, in all honesty, for graphing purposes, 
it's probably a little bit easier to leave, put those in decimal form. Five halves is 2.5, and 11 halves is 5, uh, yeah, 5.5. Now, it's also asking about our axis of symmetry, and I'll abbreviate that, axis of symmetry. And that's e real easy. It's of the form x equals, and then whatever the x part of your vertex is. So x equals 5 halves. Okay, uh, so let's get down here and look at some graphs. Our graph. Um, I'm replacing f of x with y. For graphing purposes, usually it's better to have a y there instead of your function notation. They're the same, but okay. So we got this. And, uh, I'm not very good at plotting points sometimes. <laughs> Easiest thing in the world I can screw up. I'll really focus on that 2.5 and 5.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the eyes aren't very good. Looks like that. Now, um, this right here, since A is negative, that means my graph opens down. That helps me because I know it opens down like this. Um, and... Um, we're looking at the axis symmetry, which is 5 halves or 2.5. Axis symmetry is an invisible line your graph will be symmetric to, um, specifically a vertical line. <laughs> That's as good as I can draw uh, straight wise. Um, so it's going to be symmetric to this. It's a visible line. So once I get one side, then I'll have the other side. Now, um, you want to pick a, an x value. Um, Fairly close. You don't want to go too far away, um, but this this might be too close. So I'm going to choose one, and I'm going to plug in x equals one in. So I get y is equal negative two times one squared plus ten times one minus seven. One squared is one times negative two is negative two. Ten times one is ten minus seven. Negative 2, negative 7 is negative 9, plus 10 is 1. So assuming I didn't screw up on my basic math, I'd have a point 1, 1 right here. Now, knowing that these are um, curved, that side looks like that. And by symmetry, I can flip this over, reflect it, and it would look like, like that. Um, now, let me show it in Desmos, actually. Okay, I'll click graphing calculator here. And if you're graphing y equals negative 2x squared. So I type y equals negative 2x, the second power, you can come down here to this little keyboard and you can choose the second power here, or you can just done a caret 2. And plus 10x plus 10x minus 7. Now, the neat part about this is if I put a mouse over there. Um, at the vertex. Vertex is your highest point, your lowest point. You see it's 2.5, 5.5, which corresponds with what we uh, found here. Um, it actually gives you the x-intercepts too. Sometimes the x-intercept is kind of hard to find. Uh, oftentimes it's easier just to pick a point like what you saw me do. Um, if you set the, for x-intercept, you'd have to put zero in for y. And if you solve that, you'd have to use quadratic formula. So again, it was easier to just pick that. But uh, that's how they came up with the fraction, and that's how you would uh, work the rest of the problem.